Why should I go to Andalusia? Because it's a brilliant place to visit and live, Walter. What's so special about it? Stick around and you'll find out, Tommy. Welcome to You 2 Spain. Let's do the Andalusia dance. <laughs> Hello you, thanks for joining the family here at U2 Spain. I hope you discover what you need to make your Spanish dreams come true. I dream of little white villages in the mountains. There are loads of them to choose from in Andalusia. I dream of beaches and bars. There's plenty of them too. Andalusia has over 1,000 kilometres of coastline. In fact, it's the only European region with both Atlantic and Mediterranean coastlines. On a clear day, you can see Africa. Oh, I'd like to visit there too. That's another great thing about being here. Not only do you have easy access to North Africa by ferry or plane, but you can get to just about anywhere in the world quite easily too. Malaga has a big international airport and there are several other airports right across the region. No, I want to stay in Andalusia. Well, you won't be short of things to see and do. Like what? I tell you what, let's start with a map and a bit of general information. So, here is Andalusia. It's the second largest of Spain's seven autonomous regions and also its most populated. It covers basically the whole of the south, from the breezy Atlantic coast and the Portuguese border in the west, all the way across to the border of Murcia in the east. It's massive and there are loads of beaches. Sounds like my cup of tea. You and millions of others. But it also has the highest mountains on the whole of the Iberian Peninsula. Right. I'm going skiing. Yes, you can. And on the very same day, you can visit the warm southern beaches or the only desert in Europe. Did you know that Andalusia has some of Europe's hottest temperatures and loads of UNESCO World Heritage Sites? Well, I'm not surprised so many people want to live here. They do, and millions of people visit parts of Andalusia every year as tourists. There's so much on offer here. A lot of the culture that people see as typically Spanish, like flamenco and the mixture of Spanish and Moorish architectural styles, are from Andalusia. I didn't know! that? Well, now you do. In fact, what makes this region so amazing is what has been left behind by the different cultures that have invaded it over the centuries. Are you going to talk about history? Just for a minute, and only the exciting bits. For example, the name Andalusia comes from the old Moorish name Al-Andalus, because it was invaded by and ruled for about eight centuries by the Moors from North Africa. They left behind them such a lot of their heritage, including Granada's awesome Alhambra Palace and Cordoba's stunning mesquita. Oh, I do like a bit of culture. Then you love Cordoba and Granada. Cordoba used to be the capital in Moorish times. It was mighty in those days. The majestic cities of Cordoba, Granada, Cadiz and Seville were great centres of learning, renowned across Europe and North Africa for their architecture, art, science and philosophy. In between these cities were loads of towns and villages that made up the trade routes and these were home to the great caliphs and emirs who ruled the different provinces. And you can still see the remains of their castles, fortresses and citadels that they built all over the place. I want a castle so I can rule. You're not an invader, Tommy. You're here to integrate into the community. Oh, all right. I'll integrate myself into the pub. Good lad. You wouldn't be the first to think about invading Andalusia and leaving their mark, though. There have been Phoenicians, Celts, Carthaginians, Romans. Those Romans get everywhere. They did, and they brought their skills in making roads, aqueducts, bridges, fountains, architecture. They brought the Christian religion and loads of things we still have evidence of in Andalusia. And also the beginnings of the Spanish language, which is the closest modern language to Latin. Hola! Any more invasions and wars? Loads. They were the barbarian tribes like the Vandals. Ooh, nasty! Remember the name al Andalus I told you about? That probably came from the Moorish word for the Vandals. We could have ended up being called Vandalusia. Blimey! And then there were the Visigoths. I don't like goth music. It's depressing. That's a different thing, Tommy. But whatever 
whatever music the Visigoths had, the Moors got rid of it when they invaded. So why isn't Andalusia Moorish now? Because the Christians gradually reconquered the whole of Spain, and in 1492, the same year that Columbus sailed the ocean blue, the Catholic monarchs took over. That's why there are lots of great cathedrals and churches that have been built in the cities and towns. It's all very exciting. Any more invasions? Well, plenty of wars between different rulers and republics, including the French for a couple of centuries. And then there was the Civil War more recently. But since 1975, Spain has been a democracy. Then, not long after that, Andalusia became one of the autonomous regions that make up Spain now. That's enough history! What else has Andalusia got? Well, if you're looking to visit or move here, you've got eight provinces to consider, each with their own character. Let's have a quick look at each of them so you can choose. Number one, Granada. Granada is the home of the amazing Alhambra Palace and some great cathedrals. There's always free tapas, the highest mountains and skiing in the Sierra Nevada National Park. The lush Alpujarras send the rich melt waters right down to the Costa Tropical so you can grow anything you want. And there's some of the best scuba diving around Almuñeca. Granada City has one of the largest universities in Spain, with loads of foreign students too, making it very lively and cosmopolitan. And of course, there's always flamenco here, and in the towns and villages all around. Number two, Malaga. Ah, Malaga, my home province, so I'm a little biased, but you can't deny the appeal of this place, with its string of popular beach resorts west of Malaga City along the Costa del Sol, like Marbella. Bea, Estepona and Benalmadena. Then there's the less well-developed but stunning La Axarquia region east towards Granada with its many Sierras and Pueblos Blancos like Compita and Frigiliana. Just gorgeous. North of Malaga City, up the Guadalhorce Valley, there are beautiful towns like Antiquera and West are even more picturesque mountain ranges and spectacular villages like Ronda. Unmissable. Then of course there's the city of Malaga, with its relaxed feel, its bohemian quarter, the Picasso Museum, innovative restaurants, stylish hotels, it's really upped its game over the past 20 years or so. Brilliant place. Number three. Cadiz. Right down on the bottom left of the Spain map is a region of outstanding natural beauty and rich cultural heritage that most Europeans ignore, but Spanish tourists absolutely love it. The capital, Cadiz, is actually the oldest city in the whole of Western Europe, going back more than 3,000 years, and it's where you would have found the original settlers on the Iberian Peninsula. Because of its position, it's been a hugely important trading post for the empires that have come and gone over the centuries. Cadiz is on its own little peninsula surrounded by water, so from a high vantage point it looks like you're on the stern of a boat. It has a very Moorish old town with cobbled streets, beautiful plazas, colourful buildings and colourful people too. The whole city is really friendly and upbeat. What about the rest of the province? Well, you've got the bohemian town of Tarifa at the most southern tip of Europe. You can see the spectacular rift mountains of Africa from there. It's a very chilled out party town. And because it's where the Atlantic Ocean meets the Mediterranean, it's the perfect spot for water sports. The beaches in this province are known for their fine white sand and crystal clear waters. Don't miss out on visiting the coastal towns of El Puerto de Santa Maria, Canos de Meca and Conil de la Frontera or go inland for Vejer de la Frontera, or the beautiful sherry capital of Jerez, with its bodegas, flamenco and horse displays. There's so much to love about Cadiz province, and I haven't said anywhere near enough about the natural beauty of inland Cadiz, or the cuisine, or the mild climate. You should make a video about it. Do you know what? I think I'll do a separate video about each of the provinces over the next few months so I can show you more and help you choose which one suits you best. Until then, number four, Huelva. Moving north from Cadiz, we come to Huelva province, bordered on the west by the Atlantic Ocean and Portugal. If you want to avoid mass tourism but stay in the south, this is your escape. 
The beaches, like those of Cadiz province, which together form the Costa de la Luz, are fine white sand, but even more unspoilt and wild, which is why Huelva is famous for its natural beauty. If you want wildlife, then visit the natural park of Doñana, which is one of Europe's most important wetland areas, or the Sierra de Aracena, or the Picos de Aroche National Park. In between exploring the amazing scenery of Huelva, pop into the beautiful towns and villages throughout the region with their famed seafood cuisine, and look out on your way for the endangered lynx and the rare Spanish imperial eagle. If you love nature, this really is the place to explore very very special. Number five, Cordoba. Yes, Cordoba, with its forbidding mountain ranges, its rolling plains and its pristine whitewashed villages with Baroque churches and Moorish castles. This province is famous for its olive oil and dry white wines, so you'll see a landscape full of olive groves and vineyards. The town of Montilla is renowned for the quality of its grapes and it has a castle and a palace that are both worth a visit. If you're looking for Arabic and medieval history then Rute is the place for you. But even if you're not into history, fear not because this is the sweetest town you can imagine. There's a museum of sugar with duplicates of famous Andalusian landmarks made entirely of sugar. And if you visit at Christmas, you'll see the world's biggest chocolate nativity scene. Yummy! There are loads more towns and villages worth a visit, but Cordoba City, like I said earlier, was the capital of Moorish Al-Andalus, housing one of the largest mosques in all of Islam, the Mesquita. It's a gorgeous city, and its historic centre is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. I could talk about Cordoba all day. It's a place where there's something amazing around every corner. So many people say it's their favourite destination. Number six, Jaén. If you thought Cordoba was famous for its olive oil, then Jaén is in a league of its own. It's the world's largest producer of olives and olive oil. During the first week of October each year, you'll find the world's largest trade fair devoted to olives. Because two thirds of its deep orange land is devoted to the crop, it's known as being unspoilt, expansive and very beautiful. With small towns like Ubeda, Alcala and Baitha dotted here and there that have magnificent Renaissance buildings, there are exuberant palaces, richly endowed churches and stately public squares. Outside of the towns and villages you'll find a wealth of sierras and natural parks and natural monuments which make this province arguably the most beautiful place in Andalusia. What do you think of that? Tell us in the comments. Number seven, Almeria. With the clearest skies, the most sunshine, and the lowest rainfall in the whole of Europe, Almeria is home to one of Europe's largest solar energy plants, and much of its surface area is a sparsely populated wilderness, like the Tabernus Desert, famous for being the location for many of the spaghetti western movies, and the epic Lawrence of Arabia. However, because it's partly protected by mountains, its coastline is one of the most productive agricultural zones in Europe, as well as having one of Andalusia's most outstanding wildlife areas. And its largest coastal reserve, Cabo de Gato, a quarter of Andalusia's coastline, is in this province. Almeria City is modern and commercial, with a very Spanish population and one of the largest Arabic fortresses in Andalusia, second only to Granada's Alhambra. With the sunshine on this coastline at over 3,000 hours each year, it's no surprise the province boasts a plethora of resorts. From Rochetas de Mar, just outside the capital city, to the eastern towns of Mojaca, Carrucha, Huerca la Vera, and Vera Playa, and more, where you'll find everything you need to relax or play. And number eight, Seville. Last but by no means least is the province with the region's capital and its largest city, Sevilla. This is one of the most historic centers of Europe, brimming with historical and cultural traditions. It's the home of flamenco, tapas, and the place where you'll find the valuable historical records documenting the history of the Spanish Empire. So if you want to completely immerse yourself in Andalusian history and culture and learn how to master the art of enjoying yourself to the max, 
Seville is the place for you. You'll find it on the banks of the Guadalquivir River, which cuts right through the centre of the province and sets a striking scene. Most of the main towns and villages are along this river valley. Towns are quite sparse elsewhere in the province because its landscape is dominated by extensive natural parks and forests. If you love cycling, walking or hiking, you'll be in seventh heaven. Oh, I love hiking, but I don't like history. Ah, Tommy, you're back. You can't avoid history if you're in Spain. There's so much of it. And that's what makes Andalusia such a vibrant and varied place to visit or live. I still don't know which province to move to. It's difficult, isn't it? This is a huge place but I hope this video has helped point you in the right direction at least. He's pointed me to the pub. I need a drink. I think I might join you. Shall we have some tapas and do a bit of flamenco? I want to do the fandango. Thunderbolt and lightning. Very very frightening. Oi! If you've been helped by this video click on the like button, subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. And tell us which part of Spain we should talk about next. Do it in the comments below, not on Facebook. Peace and love. Peas and fluff. Oi oi. See you in the next video. Bye. Oi oi.